What is up guys? It is Niles and this is my 1977 Ford LTD2. I've been doing a lot of work on this car recently. We pulled out the original Ford 302 that came in here and we're swapping in a Ford 460. And with that swap, we have to go to the larger Ford C6 transmission. And when I was doing that swap for the transmission, I decided it's about time to upgrade from the original column shifter that this car came with and install this floor shifter. This is a Kittle lightning rod shifter. I just loved how the lightning rods looked in the GM cutlasses, so I wanted to put that in this Ford. Um, but now we have to modify this steering column to make it look like this car was a factory floor shifter. So I already took out the shift lever. Super easy to pull those out. It's literally just a roll pin. You just got to tap it out and the whole lever comes out. But there are a couple other things you have to do. You have to pull off this indicator and fill in those holes. I am not going to be chopping up this factory one that came on this car just because I just love the color and the original originality of it. So I went to the junkyard and pulled this off a 79 Ranchero. So pretty much the exact same car as this LTD. And so we're going to have to cut this up, fill in these holes and make it look like this is a factory floor shifter car. I'm disassembling it in a box so I don't lose track of any of these tiny little pieces which are now spare parts for the other steering column. These are not hard to strip down at all, just a lot of screws and snap rings. But now I'm going to clean these up and get these ready for body work. This piece is cleaned up really nice. There's just acetone that I soaked these in and took out all the grease and actually some of the paint. I know this metal looks like aluminum, but it's actually pot metal. So pot metal was used by manufacturers to do detail castings that were like pretty cheap. So all your carburetors, um, some of your emblems are made out of this stuff. It means it's really soft and easy to cut, but also issues that you can't weld to it. So because how soft this is, we're just gonna cut this on the bandsaw. And that's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna use a combination of grinders and sanding discs to get this smooth. But if you look here, here's the old place where the shift lever used to mount. And you can see sort of how it's just the roll pin and the lever that hold this together. So you just gotta punch that out and the lever will pop right out. Our pieces are ground down and this is what I'm gonna be using to fill in these holes. So first I'm gonna put down this fiberglass repair kit, uh, just because some of these holes actually go pretty pretty deep and I don't want the bond of glass, the short-haired fiberglass fibers to fall through that hole. So I wanna give them a good backing before I put that down and then do a skim coat on top. That is looking good. Just a thin backing of fiberglass, which is gonna prevent the Bondo from pushing in when you cover it. All right, so I sanded down the fiberglass and the resin. It's looking pretty good on this side. There's still some big gaps in here. So I'm gonna use this Bondo glass, which is pretty much another fiberglass filler and it's not gonna shrink, so that's why we're gonna use it to fill in these big holes, and then we're gonna come back with some Bondo. All that fiberglass is sanded down, and the next step is just this kind of glazing putty. I really love this stuff, it sands really easily and it spreads very easily as well. So put a thin layer of this on all the pieces. Yeah, Jimmy G uh, is apparently making some progress on his broken foot. 
The 49ers just wrapped up their last local five-star review service at the lowest price. <laughs> and it's been respected and it shows that the central bankers won't have rates, and so they are going to head in your way in the next couple of days. And this is looking good guys, pretty much done sanding. I'm going to put a layer of primer on top of this. It's just crazy how fast that pot metal sands just because it's mostly zinc. Um, but this looks good. This is looking pretty good guys. You don't even see any indication that there was ever holes in this. But I am going to sand it again, primer one more time, and then put some paint on top of this. So I'm going to leave this piece in primer gray for a little bit. It's not going to go into the car for a while um, just because I want to find a paint that matches the orange that's in the interior so I can paint all my interior pieces at the same time. But thanks for watching guys. I hope you learned something and stay tuned.